Martha Gellhorn has just returned from the war in El Salvador. I have seen her draft dispatch. It has insight and passion, and it reflects a rare sense of history, which is not surprising for a journalist who has covered seven wars over half a century. The first woman to be accredited a correspondent in modern warfare, she once wrote that journalism was simply the act of keeping the record straight. As one who has never been a cipher for authority, who has written always from the point of view of the victims of war, Martha Gellhorn has kept the record straight more than most. And for that reason alone, she is a distinguished outsider. She entered Dakar death camp on the day Germany surrendered. It was, she wrote, a suitable place to be. And she's never forgiven the Germans. When is it impossible to be objective? If you mean, I don't even know what you mean exactly by objective. If, if, if you suppress, I did neither suppress nor invent. I reported it exactly as it was. And if you report what you see, um, un unless your eyes are bad, I, I don't see how you can be anything but objective. You don't lie, you don't, you don't make it different from what it was, you don't conceal something, you don't add something, it's there in front of you, that's what you see, that's what you report. Could, could you describe, recall what you saw when you uh, arrived in Dakar that day? There was a train on a siding. It was a death train. They had, the, the SS had left, so they hadn't emptied it. So Germans with handkerchiefs over their face, under the arms of Americans who had gotten there the day before, uh, were opening the doors of it and digging out the bodies of the people who had died in this train. That was the first thing. The, you went into the gates of the camp and you were sprayed, you opened your clothes, and you were sprayed with powder against uh, typhus lice inside. You went inside and there were figures still alive in striped pajamas, skeletons still breathing, sitting and lying about. By the furnaces there were stacked cordwood bodies, yellow, melting, the little fat still on the skeletons melting in cordwood because they hadn't had time to burn them. In the prison cells, the torture cells, there was a woman screaming. She was mad, she was alive, she was screaming. There was a bunch of women in cotton dresses, Jews, who had been sent there from someplace else, who clutched one's clothes and screamed like mad women. There was the infirmary, which was manned by Polish doctors, very quiet. Uh, they had been there as the sort of uh, laboratory assistants to the German doctors. Dachau was a great experimental center using Jews, Polish priests, gypsies, and they had all the records. And it was a very quiet place, and they just showed me the records. Um, it, it, it was the perfect circle of hell. Tell me what was on those medical records. They were kept, beautifully kept. I mean, any, any hospital would have been very pleased with these records. And they were, they did experiments on freezing people to death. So how long it took for a man to die in vats of ice water. In principle, this was to see what would happen to their, um, you know, their flies if they were shot down in the channel. That, by the way, was one which had a meaning. Mostly they didn't. They injected under the knee furunculosis boils and, uh, and watched whilst people died in pain of blood poisoning. Uh, there were all of the records of castration. They castrated all gypsies, for instance. Uh, there were endless records. They never stopped. They, they tried anything that crossed their minds to do. And they kept beautiful records. And these Polish doctors, who were, who were prisoners, uh, had been forced to attend all of this and do it. 
It, I was in the infirmary when the war actually ended. A, a, a very tall skeleton wearing a blanket came into the room. He had been dug out of that train that I was speaking of. And he was a very young Pole. And therefore, because he was young, he had survived. He'd been dug out of dead bodies. And he came and he spoke in Polish to these doctors. And what he said to them was, the war is over. And the doctor said, bravo, like that. And I said to him, what are you saying? And he said, he has said, the war is over. And I said, but certainly it's more than bravo. And he said, it's a bit late. And that, then I got out of Dachau in a, in a state bordering on um, <laughs> uncontrolled hysteria and went and sat in a field waiting to be removed with American prisoners of war. Mm. You, you wrote contemptuously, didn't you, of the Germans? You called them a whole nation passing the buck. And you've never really forgiven the Germans, have you? Never. Never. 